Welcome to Midwest Matters. I'm Joel Galvin, HUD Regional Administrator overseeing the six states of Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, Minnesota, Ohio, and Wisconsin. I'll be your host for the series of conversations that highlight both the initiatives of Secretary Ben Carson and some of the best practices that we're seeing throughout the Midwest region from our partners and collaborators. Today, we have the pleasure of talking with Michael Simulton, who has a long history with the Housing Authority of Joliet. Michael joined the organization in 1989, and he worked his way up through various capacities to be appointed CEO in 2013. During his tenure with the Housing Authority, his accomplishments have included creating a 501c3 instrumentality in order to build affordable housing, he implemented a progressive lease to own affordable housing model with a good stewardship component. He also helped turn the agency around from a troubled financial performer to a high performer. And he developed and implemented a program, a participant scholarship fund with public and private donations to enrich the quality of life of the households he serves. Welcome, Michael. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. And given that we're experiencing these unprecedented times, I wanted to ask if you've heard of stories about people helping people, good, good stories. For us, you know, it was about the best way to mediate um, the, the spread of the infectious disease. And so we immediately um, suspended all activity. Uh, immediately um, after that, we brought in a company um, that sanitized every building that we, we own and manage. Uh, the next thing that we did was uh, employed a resident-owned business that we have to assist with cleaning our main office. We helped establish that company, I mean, helped launch it and everything. So it was good to be able to employ that company to provide that kind of level of service to us. You talk about uh, employing a local business that you helped start. You know, that's exactly what the Section 3 program has been made for, right? To make sure that uh, residents and businesses in the community can participate. And, and then the other piece of that is we have an employee whose uh, niece, they, I think they were like ages uh, 9 and 10, and they manufactured masks for the Housing Authority of Joliet specifically. So we were very happy and pleased that they thought enough of us to do that to see and hear about uh, relatives of people who work in your building, it's, it's all about safety. So we appreciate that. One of the other things we've talked about in the past is uh, how you built this public-private partnerships to build your portfolio of affordable housing. We decided let's, let's reinvent all of our family development. So as you pointed out, we started out in 2006, we, we completed our first tax credit deal, uh, which was 74 units, which was about $19 million. And then on from there, we did another phase at the same location, phase two Liberty Meadows. That was around 10 million, 42 units. Then we went to another location that was adjacent to City Hall. And that was around $20 million, 68 units. Now we're working on our final 42 unit uh, third phase at Liberty Meadows. It's a 55 and older uh, with reference to veterans, disabled population, and working families. Those partnerships included not only, you know, the, the National Equity Fund or Bank of America and AP Morgan, but it also included the local HUD office and regional office, and it also included the city of Joliet, and, and let me not forget our board of directors who, who, who uh, grabbed the whole of the vision. You, when you bring together all the components, I, I know the mayor has been a strong supporter of you. Um, certainly your board. Your board gives you direction, allows you to do what you need to do. So, so that's really impressive and, and it's good to hear. Self-sufficiency, it's a priority of Secretary Carson. Can you talk a little bit about how your housing authority focuses on personal growth education and training to provide a better quality of life for your residents? Tax credit development or we do any kind of work, our first focus is how can we integrate our residents 
and, and give them a piece of what we're doing. Uh, for instance, Liberty Metals Phase 3, we, we wanted to make sure that, that we tried to bring in some residents that could work on the site. Uh, they went through uh, six weeks of intense training, and we had like three of those folks ready to go. And because of that training and development, two of them were able to go on and find other jobs. Out of that same scenario that I'm talking about in our development, first that company that we talked about early on she has grown this business where now she employs 14 people some of those are residents we are extremely proud of the success that she's having so that's a great success story and when you talk about coming full circle from helping them out to start the business and now they're providing services to you yes. and that's great yes. the other piece of that as you as you brought up is that this is almost a spin-off Carson and Vision Center, but part of the, the educational piece is that we have given out over $36,000 in scholarship to folks. Some of those folks have graduated from college, director, wow. and one of them is a doctor. Wow, impressive. Great. That's great work. Yeah. So, Michael, all I can do is say I encourage you to uh, formally look at the Envision Centers. So in closing, Mike, I just want to say thank you for joining us and sharing your updates and all the wonderful work you and your team are doing on the ground in Joliet, uh, all the ways you're affecting your scholarship in Section 3. It's all good stuff. So we want to say thank you so much um, and keep the residents safe and secure. I appreciate you having me. Thank you, Michael. And next time, we're going to have a wonderful guest. We're looking forward to talking with you, looking uh, at how we are making a difference for HUD the Midwest in American people.